ocean opening is a key stage in the Wilson cycle. In the Caledonian cycle, this is marked by the opening of the Iapetus Ocean. In order to create mountains in the Wilson cycle, you actually first have to rift the continent apart and make a big ocean in between. Rifting finishes with the creation of new ocean crust. And as the continents drift further apart, more ocean crust is created. We can see evidence of this ocean crust in the fields and mountains around Norway from the structures that we can see within the rocks themselves. And we're going to go and take a look at some of those key structures now. Yeah, occasionally you have some really well-preserved pillows here with this classical textbook type, the way up structure in the, in the pillow basalt. You can see it's filling, this pillow here, this small pillow here, is filling the gap oh, yeah, yeah. between yeah. that pillow and that pillow. So it was deposited on top of these, so that means that the way up in the young in direction, the way up in the pillow basalts are in, are in this direction here. And then if you look inside some of these fine-grained basaltic and metabasaltic, you see another thing that is very obvious is that there is no vesicles, there's no gas bubbles. That means that um, the gas that was in the lava when it came out was uh, kept in solution in the, in the lavas rather than released uh, as, as gas, free gas. So that suggests so quite that, deep water. That suggests quite deep water, yeah. We're going to find some more. Yeah, we can. Let's, let's go and look. It is pillow lava structures like these which are very important in identifying key features about the ocean crust. So this is a section of the, how the oceanic crust looks like and this is a very important part of the Wilson cycle. It's when you start to open the first ocean and you start to have mantle that is going up and it creates new oceanic crust. And so you create different layers and if we find any of these layers in the field then we know it's oceanic crust. And so we have a clue that actually that's what's happening. You're opening an ocean and you're in this part of the Wilson cycle. And so what you see in this section here is that in the very top here you form pillow basalts, which are lavas that are erupted under the water uh, in the seafloor, and this creates this very rounded shape uh, that sometimes you do see in the field today. And below that you have this sheeted dikes complex, and below that you have this gabbro, which is material that didn't manage to come up to the surface. And then you have the mantle layer. So if you see these layers in the field, that's really telling you, okay, now we have oceanic crust. It is evidence of these pillow lava structures that tell us key parts about the ocean crust cycle. They tell us that we have developed new ocean crust and that we're deep underwater and ultimately this part of the earth was covered by a vast ocean. Ah oh, yeah, look. Yeah, it's a really big, big, nice one, huh? This is a really good one. Yeah, it's a good, big, nice. You can sort of and see that, that whole Exactly, and you structure. see the rounded top and the flattened base of it here, it's kind of filling the irregularities on the, on the pillows below. This basically tells us that we're in oceanic crust here. Exactly, this is the, this is the volcanic sequence of this ophiolite complex. So that the we, uppermost part of the uppermost ocean crust. Part, uppermost part of the ocean crust, the next thing up here now will be sedimentary cover on it. Uh, the pillow basalts here are, are dated uh, by uh, gabbros that are crystal, crystallized a little deeper. Okay. So, and these gabbros dif has differentiated, so they, uh, they have circle in them. The ah, circle yes, mineral yeah. can be dated, and the age is 443 plus minus one or two million years. Yeah, because the zircon very, gives you a really good age. Very yeah. accurate. Yeah. And, and 443 is right on the boundary between the Silurian and the Ordovician. Wow. So it's latest Ordovician. Um, Four. 443. 443. Two million years. Wow. So 443 million years ago, we'd have been sat here under a big and, ocean above and our a, heads. Under several kilometers of, of seawater. You, <laughs> you would be on the... F because there is no vesicles and the gas wasn't released, the water pressure was higher than the gas pressure in the, in the, in the lava. So, yeah, you would have uh, had <laughs> problems with your ears. Yes. <laughs> By understanding the structures we see within the outcrops, like these pillow lavas, we can build up a picture of the ocean crust that's developing 
and forming this vast Iapetus ocean. Later that evening, we're meeting up with one of the local geologists. He's a former student of Torgir's and he's going to tell us a lot about the local geology. More importantly, he tells us about some of the ancient mining that has been going on in the region. It's mining that has happened in the past and that may also happen in the future that's of interest, as the minerals are still preserved within the hills. So all around the mountain we see all of these dotted tips of rocks. Is this yeah. from the mine? This is from the mine, yeah. And this is, uh, this is the stuff that he didn't want it. He didn't contain enough copper for them to, to make any value of it. So they just dumped it outside the mine. And, uh, and uh, so this has been grown for a, a couple of tens of years. But with so. all the colours in here, it looks like there's still quite a lot of material inside. Oh yeah, it is, it is. If you see at the top here, you see that uh, the, the uh, iron alteration from, from, the, from the, the leftovers here, it's actually created a solid top here, which is a metre high or so. And that's due to, to, um, to the, it's actually rust that keep the things together here. Well, if you, I mean, you just yeah. grab a piece like this, it's yeah. got lots of colour on it. Is that the yeah. rusty stuff you're talking about? Yeah, this is the rusty stuff. This is the alteration of, of, of the iron, which yeah. is inside there. But then, then you can also see in this oh, wow, stuff. Oh, look at these. Yes, that's... yes. This is, this is charcoal pyrite, and this is pyrite. So, so you have both mineralization here. So, this so the is, pyrite's this, iron sulfide and yeah. then the chalco pyrite actually has copper in still. That's the copper, yeah. So this one is, is, in this case, when they were mining here, they was not of any value because the copper, com, copper content was too small. Right. So, so a lot of these them. still have the chalco pyrite in them. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Which yes. they initially yes. threw away. Yes, so they just <laughs> threw it away. <laughs> These adit mines are located all over the mountain here and they lead up to an entrance to a cave. Myself and Torgir are going to explore the mineralization and look at some of the old mining that happened in the area. Wow. <laughs> right at the entrance here. You can see all of the colors. Yeah, look at the, at the mineralization, and the, both in the footfall and in the hanging wall and, and in the core of it. Huh? So what's all this mineralization related to? Well, this is the hydrothermal activity in the oceanic spreading stage. Uh, well, it's very famously known for the black smokers and, oh, right. and, yes, and yeah. this kind of mineralization. So There's even more the, evidence of it being ocean crust. <laughs> every, every bit of evidence points in that direction. And, and here we are a bit deeper down than the lava sequence. We're in the dike complex. We're in the feeder, feeder zone ah. to the... To the Black smokers. Yeah, so all, the, all the sort of hydrothermal fluids and so exactly. on. Exactly. Yeah. Hydrothermal yeah. fluids have, have been introduced into the hot off you like. And then of course they heat up, start to react with the rock, take out the interesting minerals and then... Reprecipitate the, them and then in the veins at and the, stuff. When they hit some other chemical environment, they start to precipitate uh, the minerals in this zone. So, so that's what the old guys were going for. Wow. The really rich and massive sulfide that you find related. But they were, they were investigating and mining this in the 1700s, weren't they? Yes, they were. So well, I brought these there. up. So yeah? if you take the orange one, I can. I'll take the red one, and yeah. we can go and have a closer look. You can go, yes. A bit more safety. <laughs> a, a slight safety and precaution, huh? You can get to the next, uh, next one wow. here. I mean, just look at it all. It's got this. Yeah. That's, I guess, that's uh, iron oxide, isn't it? Limonite, the yellow stuff, and, and then. You see, they, they, left the, they left the piece there. You see? Oh yeah. In order to support the walls. You see? Oh yeah. And, and that is particular. That is full of ore. You see that brown? Oh yes, you can brown. see the, the yeah. ore-rich yeah. part, but they left that yeah. to support. And, and this was a typical kind of very high concentration of uh, ore minerals. That they only took out what was required. Yeah, so you can see they've gone down yeah. trying to mine just this follow, specific, the specific layer. They follow that layer, or that horizon. They have to leave the occasional bridges there to for safety, for safety yeah. support. Of course, uh, this, uh, in fact, they, they went for the copper. Copper was what they, they were interested in those days. But we know that... Because there's lots of other stuff in here exactly, as well as just copper. And, uh, for example, they yeah. never ch checked the deposit for gold. Yeah, yeah. So uh, this is a common uh, pollution, association. Uh, yeah. Pollution in the copper, you know, is yeah. gold. Oh. <laughs> and so, so, 
So uh, maybe new investigations on this thing will uh, reveal uh, uh, rare earth elements and, and trace elements of various kinds and, and even uh, maybe even metals like gold. So I think it's quite fascinating that, you know, even it, you know, as early as the 1700s, people were using this yeah. as a resource. What they didn't probably realise is they were mining a bit of ancient ocean crust. Of course, they had no <laughs> idea. <laughs> it is, uh, it, it, it's a bit too much to expect. Right. These hydrothermal mineral deposits are located in the sheeted dike complexes of the ocean crust. Again, further evidence that we have a vast ocean that's developing here. The mineralization that's caused by big hydrothermal systems has been exploited by miners over hundreds of years and give these rocks this great and vast colorization of copper, gold and other minerals. It's quite fascinating really that um, you know, you've got to piece all of these different bits of evidence together. Um, you know, we, we saw some, down by the coast, we saw some of these stretched out pillow lava structures. And then we come up to a mine like this and we can actually see hydrothermal mineralization that was clearly taking place in ocean crust. And so that gives us evidence of this sort of second phase, the ocean building part of the Wilson cycle. It is within these adit mines that we've seen hydrothermal mineralization in the sheeted dike complexes of the ocean crust and we've seen pillow lavas that erupted on an ancient seafloor. The next stage in the Wilson cycle takes us to when this great ocean started to close. We develop subduction zones which will eventually lead to continent-continent collision and we witness the closure of a great ocean.